morning. You join us on the Trent and Mersey Canal. We're just at the southern entrance to Harecastle Tunnel. And my word, what an iconic location this is. It's, it's got a slightly eerie um, aura about it, really. We've got a super, super busy day ahead of us. Whole bunch of things going on. Obviously, we've got the tunnel to tackle itself, which is um, a task uh, all of its own with its own challenges uh, but further up the canal we've got a whole bunch of CRT stoppage notices and a bit of a race on to try and get to a decent mooring spot. Don't quite know how far we're going to make it today and the weather forecast is really not with us. It looks like it's going to rain quite heavily in the afternoon so we're in for a tough one I think but it is what it is, and we never shirk a challenge. Harecastle Tunnel, though, is certainly the longest tunnel that we've tackled to date. But it's a new experience, so we're always up for that. OK, it's half seven. CRT guys are here. Out in force by the look of it. Ahead of us, of the tunnel. So that's the stop barrier removed. Josh is warming through. Um, there is a briefing to be had, so the CRT guys have confirmed we're the only uh, we're the only boat on either side of the tunnel. Actually, <laughs> don't know if that's normal. Um, I said in summer they said you'd just find a massive queue of boats. So uh, yeah, but um, today not so. So yeah, just waiting for somebody to come over and give us the official briefing. Um, and then we'll be uh, ready to go through. So they all seemed quite organised. They knew we were likely to be here from an email which Sue sent yesterday, just saying we're likely to be here. But um, yeah, it all seems quite efficient. So um, I'm looking forward to the tunnel. Sue less so. <laughs> That's normal service. Um, yeah. Fingers crossed. All right, you ready, Doris? briefing we had down earlier with Tony, uh, the CRT volunteer, was, I have to say, really, really good, very thorough, very efficient, um, explained everything that was going to happen, it was really easy to understand, um, gave us a little leaflet. Uh, the main thing about this tunnel, where it differs from other tunnels, is the fact that there's doors at both ends, which would be very disconcerting if you weren't warned about it and large fans start as well to um, to move the air through the tunnel so it, it was really worthwhile we felt to um, have that briefing and the bonus to it all was we managed to get rid of the canopy that uh, we've been carrying around on Josh for quite some time they offered to uh, take it off us and try and find a a new home for it so it will get in with the lease of life. Ah, finally! <laughs> Hopefully that goes to a good home and somebody can use it. Yeah, I hope so. Right, we're going in. I'm not, not impressed with this at all. I, on the other hand. Aren't you? Super excited. Look at that super excited face, everyone. Look okay. at that oh. super excited face. <laughs> this is lovely Tony. Oh, yeah, lovely Tony who has, assures us that uh, rescue will come if we don't come out the other side. And Tony himself inspected the tunnel, didn't he? Yeah. Two weeks ago. Here we go, peeps. Oh. <laughs> that flew's 
slow. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Don't forget about us. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.
to the low beach now, have we? Look at the mist. behind us. Fabulous view, isn't it? <laughs> Spectacular. Oh, we're nearly out. That daylight looks amazing. <laughs> oh, it is cold in here. Tell me that, but I, I said, How often does that happen? Because he mentioned the rescue boat, and my question was, How often do you have to send the boat in to do a rescue? And he thought the question I was asking was, How often does the rescue boat get hit? I'm not really interested in that, I just want to know it's working and it, uh, it knows what it's doing. Oh, look at the cool
Now that we've negotiated Hare Castle Tunnel, we can just take a moment to sort of explain the problem. You'll note that everyone keeps saying good luck to us, and there is a reason for that. Due to managing water levels further up the canal system, the CRT are locking a section of the canal, about 30 locks worth between lock 41, which is the next one we're going to come towards, and lock 71. What we do know is they're going to start locking these locks off at three o'clock today. What we don't know is when they're going to reopen. We've made really good progress over the last couple of days trying to get to where we have, but it's clear that we simply aren't going to make it all the way through to lock 71 before the closures happen. So it really is just a matter of, I suppose, seeing how far we get and picking the best spot that we possibly can. It might be our spot for quite some time. Doesn't help the weather's going to close in on us this afternoon, which will make what is an, an already challenging stretch even more so. Right, so the lady on the boat that we've just passed was coming out of the lock. Um, said, don't get trapped. I said, well, <laughs> I think we are. we are. We can't get to lock 71 by three o'clock this afternoon. So she said, oh, well, if you're trapped for the winter, um, have a look at Wee Lock. So I assume that's a place. So there's Cherry Door, trapped for the winter. Anyway, to be what it'll be. Anyway, in commiseration, we're going to have hot cross buns. Just ahead of us here are some CRT services for water, L sand, rubbish, etc. We don't really have the time to spare to be stopping, but equally we don't know how far we're going to get today and when we're next going to be able to get water and use the L sand. So I think we've got no choice but to stop. Facilities here at Red Bull Junction have been, uh, or at Red Bull, been superb. Really good. Right, sit rep. Uh, very helpful, nice chap at Water Point says that the locks around Horsell Green, Hassel Green, Horsell Green um, are likely to be locked. 
been just struggling this pad up. I'll be back. Oh, it's making that look difficult. Right, helpful chat, water point. Um, Hassel Green, uh, he thinks that the locks are going to be locked there. So basically we thought between locks 41, yeah, that's right, and 71. Uh, the CRT would lock both of those, but hopefully leave the locks in between open. He thinks that one's going to be locked. The next service point for Alsan Water Rubbish is a place called We Lock beyond that. So basically, we've got to try and we either stay where we are or we try and get past ha Horsall Hassel Green, and then at least we can hopefully get to We Lock use the LSAN etc um, or else we're going to be well we could be here well we are likely to be here for weeks um, so yeah facilities are important so it's like a top gear race we made the decision it's only three miles about three miles uh, but it's 12 locks a flight called heartbreak hill apparently um, so we've said right let's go for it see if we can do it in time so the race is on those of you that weren't aware, these are all the marks that are made by uh, by the ropes over the years. Lock 47. Lock 48. That is a short pound. They've been twin locks for a while now. And then just at 47 above, 48 here, for some reason these are disused. It's a shame seeing infrastructure not used. Don't know why that should be. Right, the weather is slowly but surely getting worse. Lovely. So we're at lock 51. Started to chuck it down. It's only going to get worse. But we're making good progress. Started at half 10 on this uh, mission. It's now quarter to 12. And we're six locks down. Quick correction seven locks down in a minute. Water's cleaning up a bit, it's not quite as much iron. Hang on. 
see the locks are uh, less orange. A little. <laughs> Cheeky, cheeky. Sobs in the office today. We're out in the um, very fresh air. Very fresh air. It's raining quite a bit now. It's raining quite a lot, yeah. That's the forecast. Still, we continue. Postcard, but what on earth are those black, white, and red things? Right, next lock is ahead. We are now officially drenched. That in front is the M6. Oh, I'm so cold, my teeth are chattering. <laughs> How we doing, my angel? <laughs> Tip top. <laughs> right, we are seriously tempted to try <laughs> to try and more here. I'm just going to wrap the rope around the uh, motorway bridge supports and. Uh, oh. <laughs> Just hiding in here for a second while it's... Ah, uh, right, let's do it. Keep going. Round two. Team Arrow Escape, round two. <laughs> We have changed clothes because we are completely, we were completely sodden, weren't we, down to skin. Like properly down to skin. <laughs> Too cold to think straight, so um, we're all wearing uh, different things. I've just been down the towpath on the bike in a bag. <laughs> so that didn't last long. Um, just to see if there's any decent mooring spots down there, which there are. We're half tempted to stay here, however. We are on a really exposed stretch and it's super windy. Sorry dear? 
Sorry, I've tweaked my back on the um, slipping on the mud on the bike. How many what? How many more uh, About seven. Yeah, about seven. They're all in our favour. They're all in our favour. Stressing the ropes out, so this is a tough boating day. This, this is a tough boating day. This, anyway, homewards and upwards. Just one point to the <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right, keep hold of the phone, or else it's going in the canal. Is this? I'm not the biggest fan of spiders, as you know, but got this cobweb right across the lock chamber, and this one. Wow. Oh, hi, spy visitor moorings. Yes. Yeah, how lovely is this? Look, we've got puddles. Oh yes. <laughs> 